Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech Corner. In this video, I will show you how to do the initial setup of the Aruba AIP. If you are still new to Aruba APs, they have two types. One is AIP, stands for Instant Asset Point, and AP, stands for Asset Point. AIP can work standalone and it doesn't require an Aruba controller. However, if you're using a normal AP, for example, AP105, you will need a dedicated Aruba controller, which is not cheap at all. So right here is the Aruba AP105, but there was a modification had been done to the flash memory and it is now an AIP105. This is the front side of the AIP105 and we have the power indicator, the ethernet indicator and right here is 11A and N and right here 11B, G and N. At the back, we have two ports. This one is the ethernet port where you connect the network cable and this one is the console port where you connect your console cable to manage the device so this is an example of the console cable so one side is a usb and the other side is something looks like an rj45 port all right and this one will fit in just right here all right so let's put it aside Next, we have the power slot and this is 12V 1.25A So we can plug this one in just right here If you have a PoE switch or router with 48 volt, You can power on the AP with this network port as well And this small hole right here is the reset button Alright, so when you first receive an AP and you don't know what is the password, what is the username, and what is the AP so you can just perform a reset now we will perform the factory reset of the AP first of all, make sure it is turned off and then press and hold the reset button right here alright, you can see and then plug in the power cable okay you will see the LED turn red for a while and it will start to blink press and hold it for 5 seconds until you see the LED light up like this and you can release the button alright so now the AP will perform the factory reset itself and it will take around 4 to 5 minutes it's a long process so you can wrap a cup of coffee and enjoy your time and one more thing do not interrupt the power supply while the factory resets is happening or else you are going to break your AP Once the factory reset is completed, you will see the power LED light up like this and the 11BGN LED will also light up. At this time, you will see an asset point with the name instant like this and you can connect to it using your phone or your PC to configure the AP. But before that, don't forget to plug in your network cable. Alright, so let's plug in the network cable, make sure it is connected to the ENET. Alright, plug it in and the ENET LED will also light up. It is blinking right now. So let's continue the configuration on the PC. 
we back to the PC and let's connect to the instant ATS ID. Let's look for it. All right, here it is. Instant and connect. Right, yes, and yes. You must log into the network before you can access to the internet. All right, open network login page. All right, so here we are instant.arubanetworks.com and then colon 4343. Let us set the risk and continue. This is the Aruba virtual controller running on the AIP105 and you can log in with the username admin and the password admin. Click login. If this page didn't pop up, you can open your browsers and go to instant.arubanetworks.com colon 4343. All right, let's log in. And here we are inside the Aruba controller. This is the home page of the Aruba virtual controllers where we can see the network configuration. So all of the APs, all of the LS ID will show up here. And this is the list of the asset point where the in the same mesh network and the client information and the name of our AP and the information. For example, right now, our AP is connected to the Ethernet cable and it has an IP address of 192.168.1.164 and the signal strain of the client and also the usage strain. All right. So first of all, let's go and create a new address ID. Click the new button and we can give it a name. So let's say I will put it van TC dash aruba so right here we can choose between the primary users either employee or voice or guest and right here we have the advanced configuration all right so let's see what do we have do we need to change anything in this i think no all right so we are fine with the default setup click the next button and now we can select how we want the network to be configured. Either it is getting the IP address from our router, from the DHCP server on the router, or it can create a virtual network. In my case, I want the AP to use the DHCP configuration from my router. So I will stay with the network as size. All right, so just default, it will be fine. Click the next button. And right here, we can choose between different key management or encryption. Let's go with the current one and I will give it a password. So it will be from A to 63 characters. Let's put it something like trees and then the password. Right here, we have some of the fast roaming options. For example, A02.11R, V and K and just to make sure everything will run smoothly i will select them all and click the next button the set rules i will leave it at unrestricted and click the finish button a new ls id will show up right here it will be van tc dash aruba and we have a new AP show up and I am able to see it from my phone when TC dash Aruba. Let's try to connect to it. All right. And connect. We can see that the LS ID come with 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So let's check. It is 130 MBBS for the link. This is not an this is not an expected result. So we will do some further configuration on our virtual controller. All right, 
Let's close it and back to the tutorial. All right, so we're back to the Aruba virtual controllers and we can see that we have two networks. One is the instant for management and the van TC Aruba to accept the internet. And we have the, the asset point and the client. So this is my Xiaomi Mi 9 phone and it's connected to the van TC Aruba. All right, so let's click on the RF button right here. And on the band steering mode, we can select like prefer 5 gigahertz or force 5 gigahertz or balance bands. And I will enable the prefer 5 gigahertz. Let's click the show advanced options. And let's see. So the mean transmits powers and the max transmit power. It should be max. I think we are fine with the default configuration and we can just leave it there. There's nothing to change. And we can add our customization configuration to the 2.4 and 5 GHz band right here. But I think it is not necessary. All right, make sure the very high throughput is enabled. Like, there's nothing to change, so click the cancel button. On the system section, we can click on it and change the name or the host name of the AP or the AIP. So for example, for this one, I will put it when TC dash AIP dash 105. For the system location, we can just put anything we want and it doesn't need to follow any format. All right. So I can put it something like uh, Saigon, Vietnam, and it should work. All right, for the time zone, I will change it to UTC plus 7, which is the time zone of Vietnam. Where is it? All right, Hanoi UTC plus 7. And for the prefer band, it will be 5 gigahertz because I live in a condo where a lot of people have the 2.4 radios up and running. So there are lots of interference on the air. And for the admin section, we can change the admin username and password. Make sure you change the default passwords or better change both the username and the password. All right, so I will change the username to VanTC and the password to my own password. And you can create a view only users if you want. That's fine. Let's see what do we have for the admin. On the general tab, we have the name or the host name of the AP and they have configured it at ventc aip 105 The system location can be anything that you prefer. You can set a virtual controller IP right here. So I can give it an IP address, for example, 192.168.1 and then dot something that is besides my DSCP range. So I will put it something like 245. So the uplink, L3, mobility domain, and these things are quite advanced and we will not talk about it in this video. If you doesn't see, if you don't see, if you don't see the LED configuration and some other option, make sure you click on the show advanced button just right here. So we're done with the basic configuration. Let's click the OK button. And it will refresh shortly. All right, so now we can try to disconnect from the instant AP and connect to our new SSID, which is the VanTC Aruba. Click the connect button and put in a password. And yes, because I'm in a local network. I am using an Ethernet adapter on my PC, so it is taking a little bit more time to connect. All right, so 
let's go to the speed test and let's run it let's go the speed is only 28 mbps and i think the pc is still using the 2.4 radio let's check it all right properties and we can see that it was detected at 2.4 gigahertz let's see if it automatically changed to 5 gigahertz No, it still stays on the 2.4 GHz, which is not a good thing. Maybe the PCs and the adapters, maybe the PC and the wireless adapter doesn't support this. But before I do the speed test on the phone, let's log in back to the Aruba Virtual Controllers. Perfect, we are in and this is my phone it is connected to ventc dash aruba just right here and let's see the link speed it should automatically change to 300 mbps perfect the link speed changed to 300 mbps and is on the 5 gigahertz radio right now let's run the speed test All right, let's go. So we are having around 150 MBBS with the 5 gigahertz radios and let's see the upload. Still the same 160 and we can see the same on our throughput just right here. All right, so let's try to run the test for the second time and see if there any improvement. So we are having around 150 MBPS for the Aruba AIP105 with the 5 GHz radio with the phone placed nearby the AP. When I try to move around 3 to 4 meters away from the AP, I still have like 120 MBPS on the download and upload. Alright. So that's all about the basics configurations of the AIP105. And one more thing about the Aruba network. Right now we have configured the virtual controllers on the AIP105. And once you connect another AIP to the same network, to the same switch or to the same router, the new device will automatically mirroring the configuration of this AP, which means you don't need to do the configuration on the new AP, but all will have the same AP and all will have the same LSIDs and all the same mesh network if the mesh configuration were enabled. Alright, so that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.